Hello, Namaste, welcome everyone. Today is February 21st. And first of all, congratulations to all of you that for the successful landing of Perseverance on Mars. This is so exciting. You know, it's like all my happy hormones begin to flow. I just, it's very exciting news, you know, and so we know Perseverance pays off. So here we are, uh, very excited. So today we are ready to begin our yoga session and I see some of you have already joined us. Um, I can see on the gallery board here. So again, everyone, take your time to settle down, sit comfortably on your mats. Keep your spine upright and straight. Keep your shoulders rounded back. Very good. We are going to begin with a deep breath and we will raise our arms up. So go ahead, take a deep breath in, lift both your hands up, bring them over your head. Now hold on here, feel that full stretch of your spine and your vertebral column and your arms. So stay there. Five, four, three, two, one. And slowly bring your hands down. And as you bring your hands down, bring your elbows together, hold it here. And then allow your elbows to move away and bring your hands to your heart center. Very good. This is a very good stretch as we do that. And you know, last week we did a lot of heart opening posture, the heart centered postures that help with our chest cavity and thoracic cavity. So again, let's do it one more time. I see some of you are setting down. So we'll do it one more time. So again, take a deep breath in, raise both your hands up, hold it here, feel that full stretch. And slowly bring your hands down. Bring your elbows together, hold it, and then allow your elbows to move away and bring your hands to your heart center. And today, let's start with Bhu Naman. Bhu Naman is where we are going to bend our body to bring our head to touch on the ground. So what we are going to do, you're going to unfold your legs first and put your legs on 90 degree angle. So this is like perpendicular. Your left leg is in the front. Your right leg is folded. Your right foot is back. So let's see, are we all together on this? Yes. So once you're comfortable with this position, you're going to uh, put your both your hands to the left side. So the leg that is in the front, that is the side where you're going to go. Don't go on the other side. That would be impossible. So you're going to do it on the left side since the left leg is in the front. So put both your hands in the front, spread your fingers wide open. And it's like you're leaning to the left side. You can slide your hands further away from the body. See if you're comfortable with that and you can feel the stretch on your lower back and slowly by sliding your hands away, you're going to bring your elbows down. Feel that you can feel your elbows down and bring your head down to the ground. And slowly lift up. Now if your head doesn't go to the ground, you just keep it to the side and you know to whatever level you can keep. Come back to the center, we will do the other side. So now you will fold your legs in a different way. So now your right leg is in the front, your left leg, foot is behind. Since the right leg is in the front, we are going to move to the, we are going to bend to the right side. So you're going to put your hands on the right side. You're going to lean forward um, to the right side and you're going to slide your hands away. Now, if this is where your comfort level is, then stay here. Slowly, you can slide your hands further away from the body, bringing your elbows down and your head down to the ground. And slowly, you can bring your hands back. Come back to the start position. Let's do Malasana. 
Uh, we have not done malasana in a while, and this is the, the, the squat position. You may find it slightly difficult. If you're finding it difficult, then you can modify it. So first put your hands down and then see if you can slowly sit like this and your heels are up. Your, your heels are up, that's fine. Slowly you can even bring your heels down. And so let there be distance between your feet. Don't keep your feet too close. And your elbows are pushing your knees away. So stay here. This is our squat position, malasan, powerful posture. I don't know if Paddy is here. She loves this posture. And now you can turn your head to the right side. Then bring it to the center. Put it to the left side. Bring it to the center. And slowly stand up. Now, initially, yeah, if you need to support to stand up, and that is fine. Slowly, this will become independent. You'll be able to do it independently without support. So this is Malasan and then stand up. Very good. Let's do some uh, warm up today. So we will do jogging, uh, jogging. We haven't done that in last two weeks. So let's do that. Step one is squat walking. So in your own squats, do squat walking. Very good. Yes, I see familiar faces there. Very nice. Squat walking. This consists of 12 steps. So this is our step one. This is all about warming up the body. Great. Now swing your arms and allow your heels to touch your hips. So swing, so you can feel it in your shoulder joint, you can feel it in your hip joint, step two, and relax. Step three is hands at the waist level and bring your knees up. So this is how we are doing, this is low impact. If there is anyone who wants to take it a notch further, you can even jump, you can do it like this or just keep doing it slowly. Your body has the same benefits. Start low and then slowly raise your bar. Yeah, I see some of you, your hands are up here near your chest. You can raise your legs all the way, almost to your shoulder joint and relax. Now hands at the, show, at the waist and keep your fingers behind. Your thumb is pointing forward, right? This is the support for your back. Short, your feet are shoulder width apart, breathe in. And as you breathe out, bend your knee. Keep your spine straight. It's like you're sitting on an invisible chair. So this is a standing squat. We're going to do another modified squat later on. Now here, your knee is parallel to your toes, to your foot, like this. So your knee is also parallel to your feet and your knee is not jetting out in the front too much. It should be right where your toes are. So just stay there, try not to lean forward. Try to keep your spine straight. Five, four, three, two, one, and slowly come back up. Straighten your body, shake it, catch your breath. That's a powerful squat because you can feel the stretch and the pressure on your thigh muscles. Now, bring both your hands to the front. Keep your legs further apart, so about three feet apart. And we're going to do some side bends, breathe in. And as you breathe out, move your arms to the right and bend your right leg. Stretch your right and left leg. Your left leg is straight, your right leg is bent. Feel that your gaze is parallel to your right hands. I mean, to both your hands. And feel that stretch on your left leg. Feel the pressure on the left knee when you're bending and your left leg. And, oh, your right leg. Bring your hands to the center. Breathe in. As you breathe out, move your arms to the left. Bend your left knee. So now you feel the pressure on your left leg. You feel the stretch on your right leg. And bring your hands to the center. Bring them down. And now, hands at the waist level. Move both your feet. So your right foot is pointing to the right. Your left foot is like at 45 degree angle. So if you draw like an imaginary line from the heel of the base of the heel of your right foot, it will go almost towards the middle of your left foot. 
So here we are, stabilize the body, breathe in. As you breathe out, bend your right knee. And if you don't have any neck problems, you can tilt your head back to look up at the ceiling. But if you have any cervical issues, then don't drop your head back and keep looking straight ahead. Feel that stretch on your left leg. Feel the pressure on the right leg with your belly. Slowly face front, catch your breath. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, turning to the left side this time, you're going to bend your left leg. Feel the pressure on the left leg. Feel the stretch on the right leg. Hold it here. Stay with the posture. Stabilize the posture. And slowly face front. So what does it mean? Stay with the posture. What that means is that you are doing it with total awareness and your breath is effortless. Anytime your breath becomes too rapid, erratic, you know that you're not listening to your body. That's what it means to listen to your body, to stay in the posture. All right. Next, we are going to do um, side bends. So we're doing some side bends, lateral bends. So here, you're going to slide your right hand down your right leg, lifting your left arm over your head and just tilting to the right side. So it's a lateral bend, very similar to triangle pose, Trikonasana. And then slowly come back down. Catch your breath. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, slide your left hand down your left leg, lifting your right arm over your head and hold it here. And bring your arm down. All right. Keep the distance between your feet. We are going to do the forward bend and back bend. Now remember, if you have severe back problem, do not do any forward bend. If you have hernia, do not do any back bend. And feel free to adjust the posture according to your body's needs, okay? So you know your body best. Always remember the two indicators, effortless breathing and the posture is stable so that there's no wobbly movement and no shaky movement. Slowly, once you continue to do your deep breathing, the body will stabilize. All right, so forward breath. Breathe in, both arms up, tilt your head back and breathe out. Bend down to reach the ground if you can. If you can't, then keep your hands up here, wherever you are. Just stay there. Then slowly come back up. Just do it one more time at your own pace. As you're bending it back, you're bending your back, body back from the waist. And then slowly bending forward at the waist. And then come back. Feels great. And relax. Now we'll do the chest opening pose. So keep the distance between your feet. We will do the heart opening pose. We did a lot of heart opening postures last Sunday. So here is one, both arms in the front, breathe in. And as you breathe out, open your arms wide, pushing your chest forward and you can tilt your head back to look up towards the ceiling or you can just keep your eyes closed. And relax. Bring your arms to the front. Drop them down. Shake it. Catch your breath. And now we will do crisscross. Very good for our brain. It's between the left, uh, left brain and right brain. Brings balance. So here you're going to raise your right arm and bend down to reach your left foot. Then you come back with your left hand trying to reach your right foot. And if you need to bend your knees, sure. Go ahead and bend your knees. Again, listen to the comfort of your body. And last round. Crisscross, hands down. Shake it, catch your breath. And now bring your feet together. And we will do the jumping jacks. We'll start a low, uh, low impact. So spread your legs and your arms. Bring your feet together, hands together above your head. Hands at the shoulder level. Hands down, feet together. So shoulder up, shoulder down, shoulder up, shoulder down. Last round. Shoulder up, shoulder down. Very good. 
And now we can do up and down, up and down. Anyone who wants to ramp it up, feel free. And what, what I mean by ramping it up, we're doing it like this. But here we are just doing low impact. Last round. And relax. Now swing your arms side to side. Just letting go of all the tightness, all the strain, all the stiffness. Just relaxing. It's a powerful twist, spinal twist. You can feel your abdomen moving side to side and relax. Shake it. Catch your breath. Very good. Now, let's do laughter yoga. So it's, it's really a time to celebrate, you know, because we just landed uh, successfully on Mars with the perseverance and we know perseverance pays off. So that's what we are doing here. We are doing a sustained regular practice. So here we are. What we are going to do, we are going to bend forward, then throw our arms up and just have a hearty laughter. All right, so let's begin. Slowly bend down and throw your arms up. <laughs> Oh, this is funny. This is good. This is fun. All right. Very good. I see everybody smiling. That's great. So now we are going to do some standing postures. So the first standing posture we are going to do is Tarasana. So again, your feet are a little closer now, but not completely touching each other. So there's still some distance between your feet. Keep them firmly grounded on the mat. And breathe in and lift both your arms up. Feel that full body stretch as you raise your arms. So stretch your arms, stretch your elbows, don't bend your elbows. Initially, you will notice your elbows are slightly bent. Slowly, you can straighten it. Yes, all the way. Very good. Very nice. Hold it here, stabilize the body. You will notice initially there is some movement in the body and then it will get stable. Now interlace your fingers, flip your hands up above your head and slowly see if you can lift your heels up and you're standing on your tippy toes. Five, four, three, two, one and slowly bring your heels down and your hands down sideways and relax, shake it, catch your breath. So that was Asana. Now let's do rolling of the knee. We haven't done that in a while. So put your hands at the waist. We did do that, I think, two weeks ago. Hands at the waist, put your left foot forward a little bit, and then slowly roll your right knee around. So it's a supported movement for the knee joints. So your left, your right toe is still on the ground, your right heel is lifted up, and you're simply now moving, rolling your knee around in a circle and then do it in the counterclockwise direction. Just the knee. Yes. Because you know later we do ankle rotation and other rotation movements, but for the knee, we are doing it here. We'll also be doing it in Sultra Relax, bring your foot back. Now put your right foot forward, lift your right heel up and slowly roll it around. And for some of you, I don't see your faces because you're standing, but I see your body and I can see your leg moving. Yes, it's a supported movement. Now do it in the opposite direction. Very good. Last round and relax. Now both feet are grounded and just move your pelvic floor. So keep your hands at the waist. Yes, it's like you're making a circular movement with your pelvic floor. Now do it in the opposite direction. So we want to keep moving. We want to provide that range of motion to our joints. Relax, shake it, catch your breath. Now we need to do uh, some balancing posture. Remember, especially as we grow older, we tend to have, you know, lose our balance. So here is a balancing posture. So keeping both your feet on the mat, you're going to put your right foot to the front, 
and raising your right heel up. Then to the side, then to the back, then to the center. Let's do it one more time. So front, side, back, center. Now let's see if we can do it by lifting it up. So front, side, back, center. One more time, front, side, back, center. Catch your breath, stabilize the body. Let's do the same thing with our left leg. So again, put it down, your left toe on the ground, forward. Front, side, back, center. Front, side, back, center. Now we are going to see if we can lift our foot up. Now for any reason, if your body gets wobbly, you can quickly put your foot down. So again, now you're just rolling it around, swinging your, your leg, front, side, center, front, side, back, center. Relax, shake it, catch your breath. <clears throat> Another uh, balancing posture that we do is uh, Brikshasana, but this is a modified version where you're going to put your left foot on top of your right foot. So your left heel is actually resting on your right shin. So just see, if you need to hold something chair for support, you can do that. So here you are standing on one foot. Your other foot is resting on your right foot. Then let go, shake it, catch your breath. We'll try to do the same thing with the other foot. So now your body is on resting on the left leg and you're going to slowly move your, your right foot and just bring it closer to your left foot and then let it rest on your left foot. Hold it there. And relax. And you know, you can always do it this way. Do it like 90 degree angle. This is how we do sometimes Brikshasan, right? Tree pose. This is a good start. So your right heel is resting on your left shin. 90 degrees angle. And once you feel that you are stable enough, you can lift it up or you can just keep it down. These are powerful ways to bring balance in the body. Relax, do it the same way with the other leg. So now your right foot is on the ground, left heel resting on your right shin. Hold it there. So just stay there. Slowly you can even lift your foot up. or bring it down and relax, shake it. So these are different uh, ways of making sure that we are incorporating balance in our daily routine. And catch your breath. Now we need to do triangle pose. Triangle a day keeps the doctor away. And so you will spread your legs about three feet apart and spread your arms at the shoulder level. Look on the right side, turn your right foot to the right. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, bend your right knee, rest your right elbow on your right thigh while your left hand is pointing towards the ceiling. If you find it difficult to raise your left arm, you can even fold it and rest it on your back. So whatever is comfortable, you can stay there. Now, once you're stable in this posture, see if you can slowly slide your hand down and by straightening your right leg and down towards your ankle. Five, four, three, two, one. And slowly come back, bring your arms to the shoulder level, bring them down, point your foot forward. So we are doing it in different stages. And again, always do what is comfortable to you because in yoga, there is a, a scripture called Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. That is the philosophy. And in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, it says um, that Sthiram Sukham Asanam, just three words, Sthiram Sukham Asanam. What that means is stability, comfort in a posture. Three things, so always remember stability and comfort in a posture. And each one of us, we all have our own comfort level. So stay in that. Now, spread your arms again at the shoulder level. Turn your left foot to the left. Look on the left side. Breathe in. 
And as you breathe out, bend your left knee, rest your left elbow on your left thigh. Your right hand is pointing above towards the ceiling. And you can tilt your head to look up at the ceiling. But if you have any cervical problems, then keep looking straight ahead or you can keep looking down, whatever is comfortable. So you stay here. Once the body has stabilized and you think you are ready, you can straighten your left knee and you can bring your slide, your left hand down to your left ankle. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Bring your arms to the shoulder level. Drop them down. That was a lot of triangles I could see. That's great. And you know, that's how it massages our abdominal organs, your pancreas, spleen, liver. They're all getting massaged when you're doing these bendings and you know, bending and turning. Turn your foot forward, hands down, catch your breath. Now let's do the Kati Chakrasan. That's a powerful spinal twist. Stretch your arms in front of you. Keep your gaze parallel to your hands. Your palms are facing each other. Breathe in. And slowly as you breathe out, turn to the right side, keeping the distance between your hands and keep your gaze parallel to your hands. And slowly in the same out breath, bring your hands to the center. So breathe in, in the center and breathe out to the other side now. And bring your hands down, shake it, catch your breath and relax. So today one new posture we'll do is called the, the chair asan, chair pose. So this is a very similar to what we did earlier. It is called the squat position or the chair position, chair pose. Utkat asan, Utkat asan. That is the Sanskrit name. So again, your feet are slightly apart and you're going to breathe in and lift, stretch your arms in front of you. Your palms are facing down. Now slowly flip your hands so that the palms are facing up. Now breathe in and flip your hands down again. Let your palms face down and bend your knees and stay there. Now your knees are pointing straight in the front, not sideways like we did earlier. So here you are and try to keep your back straight so that, you know, the tailbone and your crown is all in a straight line. So you're not leaning forward, you're not leaning back. You're trying to keep your body straight. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. So that was Utkat Asan. Great, okay, very good. And let's do one more. Keep your hands at the waist and just stand on your on your toes, lifting your heels up. Then bring your right heel down and bend your left knee. And so you can see it sideways and then do it the other way. So stand in the center, hold your both, stand on both your toes. Then bring right heel down, come back up. Bring your left heel down, come back up. Just do it a couple of times alternately. Last round. And relax. Very good. Now we will sit down and we will do light exercises, Sukshma Vyayam. Very good, you know, this is for all our joints in the body, all the muscles in the body. You know, there's a study that is done by American College of Sports Medicine. And what it says is that healthy adults should do flexibility stretches for all the major muscle groups in the body. And what are those major muscle groups? That is our neck, our shoulders, our chest, trunk, lower back, and hips, legs, your knees, and your ankles. At least two to three times a week. So if you're not doing it daily, do it at least two to three times a week. I know you're doing at least once a week, which is a very good start. We are doing it here together. But then 
try to do it at least two to three times also during the week if you cannot do it every day. All right, so stretch your legs in front of you. Put your hands behind, keep your spine upright and straight. And if you're wondering for how long you need to do each stretch, you need to do it for at least 60 seconds. And if you cannot do it for 60 seconds, then do it for 15 seconds. You can do it in the batches. 15 seconds, take a pause. Another 15 seconds, take a pause. Another 15 seconds, take a pause. So it's like that, you can do it. So here, now pay attention to your toes. So we are going to pay attention to our joints by providing a range of motion to all our joints. So with your feet, you're going to wiggle your toes, wiggle, 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 move them, feel them, spread them, and move them, just the toes. Then curl them in, and then curl them towards the body. So breathe in towards the body, pushing the balls of your feet outward, and breathe out, point your toes away from the body. Just the toes. We will come back to an ankle later. So just now we're doing the toes. So towards the body and away from the body. Now we'll point our feet. So point both your feet towards the body, push the heels outward. So now we are working on the ankle joint. And as you push the heels outward, you can feel the stretch here on the underside of your calf muscles. Then point them away from the body, point both your feet away from the body, feel that stretch. Now, relax your feet and move them side to side, like the wipers of a car, left to right, right to left. So it's a sideways movement for the joint, very good. And now roll your feet around. So we do three rounds in one direction and then do three rounds in the counterclockwise direction. And relax, bring some distance between your feet. And now point your feet towards each other. It's like if you have an imaginary beach ball, you can imagine a beach ball that you're holding with your toes. So it's an angular movement and this affects fascia, which is the connective tissue of the body and relax, drop the ball. Spread your legs further apart with your right hand, reach for the left foot, come back with your left hand, reach for the right foot and come back. You're bending at the waist. Last round. And relax. Bring your legs together. Interlace your hands and we will do the Chakki Chalanasana, the grinding wheel posture. So keep your arms straight. Don't bend your elbows at all during this posture. Breathe in, move back and breathe out to the front. Let me do it sideways. So here you are, breathe in as you go back and breathe out as you move forward. And it's like you're drawing this circle with both your hands, but the circle is parallel to the ground. Yeah, and do not bend your elbows. Let me see what you all are doing. Yes, then do it in the counterclockwise direction. Okay. Do not, if I sit and bend my elbows like this, it looks like I'm doing the same thing, that I, but it's not. You're not getting the benefit of the posture. So you keep your arms straight. Do not bend your elbows as you go back. As you do, last round. You can feel the pressure in your belly as you do this. This is very good for people who have constipation or issues with gastrointestinal system or any other digestive issues. All right. Now let's bring our attention to the kneecaps, keeping your back upright and straight. Your hands are behind you and shoulders rounded back. Press your kneecaps down and hold it, hold it tight. Feel the tightness of your quads, your hamstring. Yes, very nice. You're holding it tight and then relax, shake it, very good. Fold your right leg, interlacing your fingers, you're going to hold the right thigh, lift your leg up, straighten it and fold it. So stretch it and fold it. Last round. Then roll it around three times, one direction, three times in the opposite direction, very good. Do it slowly and mindfully. 
Then hold it still and just roll the foot around. Work on your ankle joint. Then do it in the opposite direction. And that's it. Straighten your leg, catch your breath, shake it off. You're ready to do the other leg. So now you're going to fold your left leg, lift it up and down, up and down, last round. And then roll it around in one direction, then do it in the opposite direction. Yes. Now hold the knee still and just move the ankle. So you're moving the foot around, ankle rotation. Then do it in the opposite direction. And relax. Straighten your leg, shake it off, catch your breath. Now fold your right leg, cross it over your left thigh. Take the fingers of your left hand, put them in between the toes and gently shake your foot. So this is your, your hand. The fingers are working as toe stretchers, you know, toe spreaders. So you have these built-in toe spreaders, just use that. Shake, 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 then roll it around, rolling the foot around in one direction, then do it in the opposite direction. So this is a supported movement, very good for, very good for stimulating blood circulation. Very good for people who have very close veins issues and relax with both your hands. Now tap, tap, tap gently all over your foot, then press your toes, you the balls of the foot, and the arch, the heel, all over. Then make a yogic fist and use your knuckles and slide them all over your foot, all over. Yes, yeah, stimulating again blood circulation and activating those nerve endings that, uh, that are connected to different parts of the body. And that is what is called the science of reflexology, which is, you know, different points uh, in the hand and in our feet that correspond to different body parts. Now use your knuckles to knock, knock, knock. It's like tapping all over gently. Feels good as you do that. Wonderful. And relax. Now let's do this. Lift your folded leg and move it side to side. Like a baby. Yes, rocking it side to side. Then rest it on the ground. And now slowly move your knee towards the body and away from the body. So breathe in, bring the knee towards the body, breathe out, away from the body towards the ground. Do not wrestle with your knee. If your knee goes here, stay there. You know, don't try to push it down further. You know, with time, like I said, you know, we just had perseverance land on Mars. So perseverance, sustained regular practice. Before you know, your knee will all will be all the way down. Relax, straighten your leg, shake it, catch your breath. Let's do the same thing with the other leg. So cross it over, take the fingers of your right hand, put them in between the toes of your left foot. Yes. And then slowly shake, shake, shake. Very good. Gently. Yes. And then roll it around. Yes, do it in the opposite direction. Very good. And then remove your fingers and with both your hands, tap, tap, tap gently all over your foot. With both your hands then press your toes, giving it a nice massage. This is our pedicure time. So just big toe and the little toes, the balls of the foot, the arch of the foot, the heel. And then make a yogic fist. Again, with your thumb inside and use the knuckles to slide them all over your foot and then tap, tap, tap gently with your knuckles all over your foot. And lift your folded leg and gently rock it side to side. Yes, very good. It's a sideways movement for your pelvic joint. Then relax, rest your folded leg down and then Breathe in, bring the knee towards the chest and breathe out, away from the chest towards the ground. So let's do it a couple of times. So you're resting your hand on top so, or you can even bring it down, yes, whatever is comfortable and then relax. Stretch your leg, shake it, catch your breath. Very good. So that's all the movement. Now let's do Bhadra Konasana, Tithali Asana. 
So you will fold both your legs, bringing the soles of your feet together, interlacing your hands. You're going to bring your hands underneath your toes, keep your spine upright and straight, and flap your knees up and down. So 10 years ago, when we started doing our yoga sessions here on a weekly basis, our knees were all up here, and that's how we started. But slowly, we didn't even realize with practice, we didn't know when the knees dropped all the way down. So again, it's just a matter of practice. And before you know, your knees will be down all the way. Relax, shake it, catch your breath. And now let's bring our attention to our upper body, joints in the upper body. Remember the study I mentioned earlier, American College of Sports Medicine, so it's talking about different groups of muscles. So what are those major muscle groups? So neck, shoulders, chest, and that's what we are addressing, you know, your entire body, neck, shoulder, chest, trunk, uh, lower back, hip joint, uh, legs, ankles. So <clears throat> coming to our upper body, arms here, shoulder joints. So you're going to stretch your arms in front of you. Feel the full stretch. Initially, you will notice your elbows are slightly bent, but slowly straighten your elbows and your palms are facing down. Stay there. Then spread your fingers wide open and then close. Make a tight yogi fist with the thumb inside. Open and close. Then open and then raise your hands up, straight, down, straight, up, straight, and then alternately move them up and down. So this is extension, hyperextension, flexion that you are doing. And then flip your hands. Make a yogic fist with the thumb inside and roll your fist around. Yes, very good. In one direction. Then do it in the opposite direction. So you're working on the wrist joint. And then open your hands. So your palms are facing up and fold. So open and fold. Very good. Do it sideways. Open and fold. And like I said earlier, for you know, we are doing it at least for 60 seconds. But if you're not able to hold it for 60 seconds and your upper arms are hurting, you can rest. So drop your elbows down, do it in um, stretches of 15 seconds each. And then roll your elbows around. Breathe in as the elbows go back and breathe out as the elbows go to front. So second round. And the last round we'll do in this direction. And let's do it in the counterclockwise direction. So breathe in when elbows go back, breathe out as they move to front. And continue to do your deep breathing. Your deep breathing is that your out breath is longer than your in breath. So that means you're detoxifying the body and you're getting rid of the stale air from the body. Shake it off, catch your breath. And now, uh, holding the two hands together, you're going to raise them up and then bend it to one side, bring it to the center, bend it to the other side, feel that stretch, bring it to the center and relax, let go, bring your hands down, shake it, catch your breath. Now, a few weeks ago, we had done uh, movements for our hands. And that was called, you know, seven hand movements. So what are those seven hand movements? We are going to do that. Powerful movements for keeping our hands in good shape. So since we are paying attention to our arms, let's do that. The seven hand movement. The first one is clap. So remember that, clap. So clap. And when you're clapping, spread your fingers wide, like, you know, like a starfish. So again, You're doing very good. So you're clapping for yourself. We are our own cheerleaders, but we can be cheerleaders for each other. So clap, 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 feel that sound. And there are different points that are touching each other as you clap. Very good. Second movement, what is the second one? It's called punch. So your right, left hand is like a wall. Your right hand is like the, the fist, that's the punch. So, and you're going to use this side of the fingers to punch your hand. So the wall remains, the punch is moving. So you're doing it like this, yes. And relax, now do it the other way, with the other hand. So again, you're going to punch, punch, very good. So try to keep the wall straight, 
and stable, move the left hand and relax. So that is punch. Next we'll do like hammer. So you make a fist with your left hand and with your right hand you're going to hammer it like this. You're going to gently tap your head, your fist. Now make a fist with your right hand and now with your left hand you're going to hammer. Okay, so that's number three. What's number four? Number four is finger clasp. So what is the finger clasp? With both your fingers in your hand, you're going in and out. Because our fingers are not so used to it for keeping them open like this, you may find it initially difficult for your fingers to go in. But with practice, they will just fit right in. It's like, you know, putting your hand in a glove. In, out, in, out, in, out. So your fingers are open and you're just going in and out, in and out. Yes, very good. So that is your finger clasp, number four. Number five is palm edge. So what is a palm edge? Is this, this edge of the palm, you're going to hit the two hands together. Just like that, the edges, yes. The palm edge and relax. Number six is the palm heel the heel of your palm. So you're going to bring the palm heels together. Yes. Yeah. And the last one is the wrist, uh, wrist for the wrist. So keeping your hand straight, you're just going to with your other hand, you're making like the letter C and you're using your this, this hand to move and your left hand is st still and stable. So you're just uh, moving it around the wrist joint. Then do the same thing with your other wrist. And done, that's it. That's our seven hand movement for the hands. Now the big group of muscles uh, that is left is our neck joint. And so for that, you're going to do Brahma Mudra. And we always do it sitting down, never do it while standing up. So. Uh, so keep your hands in Gyan Mudra position or Chin Mudra, which is your index fingertip, joined with your thumb tip, rest of the fingers are straight, resting on your lap. And once you know what we are doing, you can do it with your eyes closed. So you slowly take a deep breath in, drop your chin down, and let your chin sit on the center of your, your collarbone called sternum. Feel the stretch on the back of your neck. Then slowly lift your chin up, gently drop your head back. Feel the stretch on the front part of your neck. Bring your head to the center. And now tilt your head to the right. So your right ear is closer to your right shoulder. Feel the stretch on the left side of your neck. Now bring your head to the center and gently tilt your head to the left. And now the right side of your neck, you can feel the stretch there. Bring your head to the center, turn your head to the right. So now your chin is parallel to your right shoulder. As if you're looking over your right shoulder, bring your head to the center and then turn to the left, looking over the left shoulder. Bring your head to the center, then drop it down and slowly and mindfully roll your head around. So we'll do two rounds in one direction and two rounds in the counterclockwise direction. But do it at your own pace. And at any point, if it hurts or pains, that means you have gone too far. You need to cut back or you need to stop. So just listen to your body. Always remember that yoga practice is, a, is an ouchless practice. That's what I like to call it. Why? Because you're doing it mindfully and at no point you will be experiencing any pain or hurt. Relax and when you open your eyes, you just feel very relaxed. So that's why it's recommended you do it with your eyes closed when you're doing it. And like I said earlier, Kiram Sukham Asnam, what that means in Sanskrit is stability and comfort, very critical aspect of yoga posture. It was said uh, over 5,000 years ago. 
Steram Sukham Asanam, that when you are in an asan, when you are in a posture, there should be stability and there should be comfort. So you can never ever hurt yourself while doing yoga. Now we're going to turn sideways and we're going to do the uh, postures in the supine position. So here you're going to lie down on your back and keep your feet together. Your toes are pointing towards the ceiling. Both your arms are alongside the body and the palms are facing down. This is our start position. This is our base position. So after each posture, we will come back to this base position. So we're going to start with the Pawan Bhutasan knee chest pose. So you're going to fold your legs, bringing your heels close to your hips. Then you're going to lift your folded legs, wrap your arms tightly around both your legs, hold the folded legs tightly against your body. And as you press it against the body, you can feel the pressure on your lower abdomen in your stomach as you're holding it tight. And if you don't have any severe back problems, you can do this, breathe in. And as you breathe out, lift your head up towards your knees. So you're all curled up like a ball. And then slowly relax your grip, come back to start position, catch your breath. Next, we will do the Markatasan or Jathar Parivartan Asan. So here you're going to spread your arms at the shoulder level with your palms facing up. Fold both your legs, bringing your heels close to your hips, breathe in. And now drop both your knees to the right. And keeping your shoulders on the ground, you're going to turn your head to the left. So your shoulders are still on the ground. Both your arms are at the shoulder level. Your right knee is on the ground. Your left knee is sitting on top of your right knee. Your left foot is sitting on top of your right foot. And your head is turned in the opposite direction, away from the knees. And you can feel the stretch on the left side of your abdomen and also on your lower back. Relax, bring your knees to the center, bring your head to the center. Catch your breath. We'll be doing the same thing on the other side. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, drop your knees to the left. And now turn your head to the right. Your shoulders are still on the mat. Your head is turned in the opposite direction, away from the knees. Stay here, feel the stretch on the right side of your body and your lower back. This also helps to alleviate back problems or back pains. And it keeps the spine flexible and healthy. Slowly let go, bring your head to the center, your knees to the center, and come back to start position. Catch your breath. Now we will do the unicycle uh, posture today instead of bicycle. So you're going to fold both your legs, bringing your heels close to your hips. And you can slide your palms under your hips. That gives a little extra comfort and push to the lower body. And then you're going to lift your legs. And together, you're going to move them in a circle. So breathe in as you stretch your legs and breathe out as you fold them. So it's doing it in unison. You're doing them together 
at and last round and then we will do counterclockwise in the reverse direction together. So we do three rounds in one direction and three rounds in the opposite direction. And then catch your breath. Keep your hands under your hips and stretch your legs. Next, we will do leg rotation. It's called Padvritta Karasan. Um, we will do it with both legs, but if you're not comfortable with doing it with both legs, what you can do is just do with one leg and you can fold your other leg and fold it. So uh, then you will have to remove your hands from under the uh, hips. So again, lift both your legs up or you can do with one leg, you're doing like this, you're holding your other folded leg and doing one leg up. And then you'll be, moving it in circle. So that is one way to do it. Or you can do it both legs as we are doing. So slowly and mindfully, keeping your feet together, your legs together. So we do three rounds in one direction. And then you do counterclockwise three rounds in the opposite direction. And when you finish, you can come back to start position. So if you're doing one leg at a time, then make sure you do the other leg also. Catch your breath. Very good. And next we'll do Sukta Baddha Konasan. This is a powerful relaxation posture where you fold both your legs like a butterfly we did earlier, bringing the feet together. So the soles of your feet are touching each other and your legs are spread. So you can just stay like this. Powerful rela you know, relaxation posture. You can even fold your arms and put them under your head. Very relaxing. Sukta Baddha Kona Asana. It helps to promote sleep also. So anytime you have trouble falling asleep, try to sleep in this posture. And relax. Come back to start position. And we need to do an inversion. We have been doing like, you know, the bridge pose, we do that, or we do Vipreet Tani, where we lift our legs and put it against the wall. So let's do the bridge pose today, say to Vandhasan, because we did the Vipreet Tani Asan last time. So bring your feet towards your hips and both your arms are alongside the body. Breathe in. Pushing the arms down, your elbows down, you're going to lift your pelvic floor up. So you're lifting your hips up, forming a bridge with your body. That's why it's called a bridge pose or so same people asana. Pull your hips in, feel the tightness in your glutes, hold them tightly. So this is one way. You can even clasp your hands together on the, on the floor and just hold it like that. So whatever is comfortable to you. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Bring your hips down, stretch your legs. We are finished with the supine position postures. So, so far we have already done quite a bit when we were doing the yogic warm up, yogic jogging, we did our standing postures. And so you can turn to your side, right side, and just stay there for a few seconds. So we did our forward bend, back bend, lateral bend, spinal twist, extension, flexion, rotation. We did some balancing, 
We work on the joints for Sukshma Vyayam. Now we are doing the supine position that we just finished for our gastrointestinal system and digestive system. And then we are now going to do the prone position posture. So you're going to roll over. And we have already incorporated inversion and balance in our routine. And then we'll be doing pranayam, breath work, and yoga. It sounds like a whole lot, but actually when you do it, you just go and flow in one go. And at one stretch, and you're done. So here, the start position is that both your hands are next to your head. Both your feet are together. Your forehead resting on the mat. And your hands are closer towards your shoulder. So we will start with Matarasan. So bring shoulder with distance between your legs. Pressing the mat down with both your palms. You're going to bring your elbows in the front. Make a sideways stop with your palms. Rest your chin on your hands. Yeah, like that. And alternately move your feet towards your hips. So right heel towards the right hip, left heel towards the left hip. Very good. Yes, and now you can do with both your feet together. And relax. Come back to start position, catch your breath. Now we'll get ready to do the cobra pose. So again, bring shoulder width distance between both your feet. Pressing the mat with both your hands and keep your fingers spread like a starfish. When you're pressing hands down, you're going to lift your head up, your neck, chest, up to your belly button. You can even then, slowly, once you're comfortable, you can even straighten your arms and tilt your head up to look up towards the ceiling. And you can feel the stretch extending down from your cervical down to thoracic down to lumbar almost towards your tailbone and slowly come back to start position catch your breath now we'll do the shalavasan so what we did right now was top down now we'll do bottom up lifting so you're going to bring your hands under your thighs with your palms facing up. Your hands are under your respective thighs. And now lift your right leg up, pointing your right toes away from the body. Feel that stretch. You're not just lifting it from the knee up. You're lifting it from the pelvic joint, from your hip joint. Then bring it down and lift your left leg up. And bring it down. And then if you feel you're ready, you can even lift both your legs up. And you can even lift your head up. Then bring it down. Remove your hands from under your thighs. And now fold your right leg and hold your, see if you can hold the leg with your right hand. And now stretch your left arm in front of you and see if you can slowly lift it, lift your right knee up and then bring it down. Take your hand back, let go of the grip. And now, so you have removed your hands from under your, your thighs. They're not under your thighs. Now you're going to fold your left leg, fold the left ankle if you can with your left hand. And see if you can then unbring your right hand forward and see if you can lift it up. Then bring it down, take it down. And then if you are ready, you can even lift both your hold both your ankles and lift your head up and your knees up. This is called Dhanurasan, bow pose. Otherwise, just do one leg at a time. Okay. 
Let go. Turn to your left side. Catch your breath. And when you're ready, you can sit up. And we, will, we are ready to do the pranayam. So here we are going to do deep breathing. Pranayams are powerful because prana is the life force that sustains us. So it's very important in your yoga routine to integrate for pranayam and do raj yoga, which is also called the quiet time, the meditation time. So here, keeping your spine upright and straight, your shoulders are rounded back. You can sit against the wall, you can sit, against, sit on a chair and do it. Take a deep breath in and an extended breath out. So it's an extended in breath and extended out breath. This is called Bhastika Pranayam, deep breathing. Again, try to do it at least for two minutes and then you can work your way up. So two minutes means at least do it 10 times. And then slowly you can work your way up. So 10 rounds means in breath and out breath. That is one round. So you're making optimal use of your lungs. Now we will do Kapal Bhati Pranayam. This is the forceful exhalation that we do through the nose. The only part that moves is your belly. And we do it slowly. One out breath per five seconds. So it's like something is stuck in your nostril. You're blowing it out. And sometimes if there's mucus in your nose, then you might need a tissue because the mucus comes out. And you always do it slowly. If you have had a surgery, then don't do it. It's not recommended. At least for six months after a surgery, do not do this for all party crime. Also, if you have hypertension, do it slowly. The powerful pranayam uh, where it is detoxifying the body of all the stale air because you're doing this forceful exhalation. So any stale air that is in our lungs, in the little um, sacs, air sacs called alveoli, it's inside that. All that stale air is released and making more room for more fresh air to go in. And that's why you feel more recharged after this. And relax. Let's do the um pranayam, the bumblebee pranayam for relaxation. So take your hands on your forehead, gently putting your index finger on your forehead, closing your eyelids, gently putting your middle finger on top of your eyelids. Your ring finger is above your upper lip, your little finger is below your lower lip, your thumbs are pointing towards your ears, and you're going to press the tragus, that little protrusion, um, and close your ear holes with that. So, yeah, so this is called Brahmari Prime. It helps in lowering uh, cholesterol. It helps in improving sleep. Very good for people who have sleep, sleep apnea. Also helps in getting rid of snoring. So uh, we are going to take a deep breath in and make a humming sound. So go ahead. Mm. Powerful, powerful, very relaxing. And just a total sense of just nothing but just pure awareness. And now you're going to turn sideways and lie down and we'll do yoga nidra. That's the full body relaxation. And because your body is so relaxed now, that means the parasympathetic system of the body is active. You might need a blanket or something to cover yourself. So just feel free to, to use a blanket or a jacket. 
So here, as you lie down, you're going to drop your feet down. So being totally relaxed. So now your feet are not pointing upwards, you know, or the toes are not pointing towards the heel. You're just going to drop your feet and let there be distance between your arms and your body and let there be distance between your legs. You also uh, make sure your palms are facing upward, not downward. This is called the receiving mode where you're receiving energy. So here we are going to do mental scan of our body using our attention. So bring your attention to your feet. Feel your feet by wiggling your toes, moving your toes. Yes, feel them and then curl them in, curling your toes in as if you're making a fist. Then stretch your toes and push the balls of your feet outward. Feel that stretch in your feet and then relax, let go. Shake it, catch your breath. Now bring your attention to your kneecaps and press the kneecaps down. Hold it tight, feel the tightness in both your legs as you're holding your kneecaps down. Hold it, feel the tightness in your thighs. Hold it and let go. Now bring your attention to your pelvic floor and pull your hips in, feel the tightness. Hold it tight. You can feel the tightness of your glutes and your thighs holding the hips tightly. Feel it and then relax. Let go. Arch your back off the floor and then drop it down and hold the belly in as if you're waiting to exit. So your belly button is like trying to reach the spine. Hold it tight. Let go. And now clench your hands into tight yogic fists and press your hands down. Pressing the fists down, press the elbows down. Feel the tightness in both your arms. Hold it tight, keep pressing them down and relax, open your hands. Now move your shoulders towards your ears and then let it go. Now slowly move your head side to side, right to left, left to right, then let it wobble. Just let go. Scrunch your facial muscles, pull them all in towards the center of the face as if you're frowning. And then relax your facial muscles, raising your eyebrows towards your hairline. And relax, open your mouth wide, dropping your lower jaw down and let go. Curl your lips as if you're ready to whistle. And then bring a smile on your face, stretching your lips from ear to ear. And like Ruby said, you're not smiling just with your lips, you smile with your entire being. Now you feel lighter. You don't feel the heaviness of your body anymore. In fact, you may not even feel the body. You feel like you're floating in the air. No tightness, no tension, no stress, no stiffness. Slowly turn to your right side and stay there. And when you feel ready, you can sit up and just stay with this sense of lightness, stay with this sense of total presence, awareness that you're feeling. And you will notice by now, if you were feeling any aches or pains earlier, they have vanished or they have minimized. Those are all physical sensations whether we feel a heating sensation or a cooling sensation, a twitching or an itching sensation, these are sensations, they come and go. And just like the sensations come and go, there are feelings we experience, feelings of joy, feelings of sadness, they come and go. 
And just like the feelings come and go, thoughts come and go. Thoughts about past, we call them memories. And they may be pleasant or unpleasant, but they are thoughts. Nothing more than a thought. It comes and goes. When it is unpleasant, it can trigger certain feelings in our minds. When it is pleasant, it triggers a different kind of feeling in our mind. But you are prior to your thoughts. Same way, when you think about future and you, you get worried about future or what might happen, that is another form of thought called anxiety or worry or imagination. And a lot of times it is imagination as we think about the future. So there's a difference between practical thoughts and the psychological mind. The practical mind, of course, you are planning what you need to do. But it is the psychological mind that we are talking about that sometimes can pull you down. Always remember that they have no, no energy of themselves. They feed on your attention. They, the thoughts feed on our attention. When we pay attention to the thoughts, then one thought will lead to another thought, to another thought before you know you are wrapped up in a cloud of thoughts and you find it hard to get out. So all you need to do is to bring your attention to your breath. And as you bring your attention, you notice your breath comes and goes by itself. Even in the deep sleep, the breath goes on. And as soon as you bring your attention to your breath, you disengage yourself from that chain of uh, thoughts, that cloud. And it helps to create a little space between you and your thoughts. And slowly, with practice, you will notice that you'll be more and more in present. And you'll feel more presence. And you'll be more aware. And you will realize that that is who you are, the awareness, the presence. And all the labels, they came afterwards. The name, ethnicity, language, educational credentials, job titles, relationship roles, all of those came later. So the presence and the being is who we are. And that is what connects us all. It has no shape, no form. So it is shapeless, formless, colorless, limitless. It has no boundaries and it is non-local. Slowly, we'll bring our palms together, rub our hands, feel the warmth in your hands as you rub them on. Then, cup them over your eyes, over your face, and massage your facial muscles, your forehead, your cheeks, your face, all over. You open your eyes, your scalp, do a gentle massage of your scalp. Very good. So, um, like I said earlier at the start of the class, this is a very exciting week. It has been a very exciting week with the landing of Perseverance on Mars, which really um, excites me a lot, makes me very happy. I can just feel all my happy hormones. Um, and so keep that perseverance in mind and continue to do that. And here we are doing interplanetary communication and it's like intergalactic uh, communication, but we are still having trouble with our Google network. So eventually we'll get connected and uh, we'll, we'll be getting those emails, hopefully sometime in future. But just remember, we continue to meet here on Sunday evenings and Sunday mornings.
when we do our chair yoga and in the evenings we do our mat yoga. So, and our gentle yoga. So thank you. Um, till next time, eat wisely, move smart, breathe deep, sleep well, relax, meditate, stay healthy and stay safe. Namaste. Thank you, Baba. Thank you so much.